Good day, Great Hands. Welcome to this next lesson on Euclidean geometry. If you recall, we were doing this question in the last lesson, which was last week, Wednesday. It is quite a while back, I know. Um, so what we had to do was we had to prove some things. Um, and you know what? I'm actually going to... Yeah, I'm actually getting, no, let's carry on with this. It says, um, we had to prove, we've written down, sorry, I was considering whether or not <laughs> to delete the writing art that we've already done. Um, let's just go through it and briefly go over what we did. I know it's a, it's a long time from Wednesday to Monday. So let's just go through it. It says, in the diagram below, D, D is the midpoint, okay, um, of A, B, uh, of triangle A, B, C. A, B, C. Okay, so D is the midpoint of that side there. E is the midpoint of A, C. There is E, the midpoint of A, C. And we also know that D, E is produced 2F such that D, E is equal to E, F. And we know that C, F, C, F, if I could find it, C, F is parallel to B, A. CF is parallel to BA. Okay, now this says write down a reason why triangle ADE, ADE, this little yellow one here, is congruent to triangle CFE, CFE. Okay, and what we did, we worked out that it was side angle side. We had that these two angles were um, vertically opposite. We had that this side was equal to this side. Um, and we had that this side was equal, sorry, we had that this side was equal to this side because it's given. And we had that this side was equal to this side because it was given. Therefore, we had side angle side. Okay. Right. Now, it also then said we had, so we did that bit. Then it said write down a reason why DBCF is a parallelogram. And we did D, B, C, and F. They already told us that CF was parallel to BA, that CF was parallel to BA. So we proved already that AD was equal to FC, proved above. We also knew that AD, AD is equal to DB. Okay, so uh, therefore we know that one pair of opposite sides is parallel and it is equal and therefore this thing here is a parallelogram. So we're saying one pair of opposite sides, that would be DB and FC, DB and FC are parallel and they're equal. Now it says, hence prove the theorem that states that DE, DE is half of BC, that DE is half of BC. Okay, well that's actually really easy if we think about it. We have just proven that this thing here, yeah, this whole of this, is a parallelogram. Okay, we've proven that the whole of that's a parallelogram. Okay, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? Just a second. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go here, yeah, and I'm going to go here yeah, like this, and I'm going to delete, and then I'm going to go, there we go. So we've just proven that the green thing is a parallelogram. Do you agree? So if that's the case, do you agree that this side has to be parallel to this side, and the whole of this side has to be equal to the whole of that side? So in parallelogram, parallelogram, uh, it would be DBCF, DBCF, DBCF. We have that DF is going to be equal to BC, okay, but, but DE is equal to half of df because they gave it to us. They told us that e was that de equals ef. Therefore, de is going to be half of bc. See, there you go. Not so bad, eh? Right, let's start on this question, a nice fresh question. 
Okay, it says in the diagram below, PQRS is a parallelogram. Okay, so telling us it's a parallelogram. So we've got PQRS. And grade tens, I really would suggest that you guys use pencil colors or colored pencils or highlighters or whatever. And the nice thing about this is in the tests and exams, they usually give you the question like it is now, and then they give you a separate page where you can work on. So you've got two options, you've got two opportunities to work on the question. So if you make a mistake and you're coloring the wrong thing, it's not a big deal. You can always go and make do it again on the other page, piece of paper, okay? Um, you don't get marked on what you draw on the page. I mean, on the diagram, you get marked on what you write. So you can draw anything you need to draw. Okay, so if it's a parallelogram, we know that this side is parallel to this side. That's what those arrows are supposed to show. And this side is parallel to that side. We also know that that is equal to this. And this is equal to the whole of that. Okay, so we've done that. Now it says PR and QS intersected M. B is a point. There's B there, which I've written over. Is a point on Q such that SBA and RQA are straight lines and SB equals BA. Okay, so let's just change colors. We've got that, change colors. We've got that SB is equal to BA. So this whole line here is equal to this whole line there. Okay, so now it's B is the midpoint of SB. Okay, then it says SA cuts PR in C, SA cuts PR at C, oh, there it is, and PA is drawn. PA is drawn. Awesome. It says prove that. Prove, mm, it's very frustrating. Oh, what happened? Oh, it's so frustrating when it does that. Okay, so the important bits were that this is equal to this and that the green one is a parallelogram. Okay. Now, what are they asking us to prove? They're asking us to prove that SP is equal to QA. So they're asking us to prove that SP is equal to QA. Okay. So now we already know that SP is equal to QR. Do you agree? Because of the fact that it is a parallelogram. I'm just looking to see what I need. And we know that B is the midpoint of SA. We also have that, let me just go back to the green. This line is parallel to this line and that line is parallel to that line. And like I said, we've got this is equal to this. So if these two lines are parallel, okay, um, we can, do you agree that we can use congruency? There we go. We can use congruency. We're going to have that this angle is equal to that angle. We're going to have that that angle is equal to that angle. And we're going to have that that side is equal to that side. Therefore, that triangle is congruent to this triangle. Therefore, SP is going to equal QA. So let me not overwhelm me just writing that, but let's try it again. So I'm going to say in triangle SBP. SBP. And triangle so we go always in the same order. So it's going to be A, B, Q. So think about this way. We went red, green, blue. This time we have to go red, green, blue. So it's going to be A, B, Q. A, B, Q. Okay. Um, do you agree that S, B is equal to B, A? Given. We also know that angle S, B, P is equal to angle A, uh, sorry, let's try again, A, B, Q, Y, they are vert up. And yes, you might, you're allowed to summarize like that, vert up, okay? 
So therefore, this angle is equal to this angle. Then you also know that angle PSB, angle PSB is angle. Now, let me show you something. Since we wrote these in the right order and we wrote SBP, then this could be PSB. And the angle we should be looking for is Q against okay, PSB. So it should be QAB. Let me check. QAB. Yes, it is. Angle equals angle QAB. Why? Because they're alternate. They're alternate angles. Why? Because PS is parallel to AR. And again, it's given. Therefore, triangle SBP is congruent to triangle ABQ. Why? It would be angle side angle. Okay. Therefore, SP has to equal, SP has to equal AQ. AQ. Ta-da! So there we go. We've proven it. Now it says prove that SPAQ is a parallelogram. SPAQ. Well, that's actually so easy. We don't even have to do much um, working out there because of the fact that do you agree we've just proven that SP is equal to AQ? We also know that SP is equal to AQ because, I mean, it's parallel because it's this line extended. It's SQRRQ extended, okay, our straight lines. So therefore we can say, okay, we don't even have to write it out too much. We've already proven that SP equals AQ. Okay, so we've proven that SP equals AQ. We've also been given that SP is parallel to AQ given, okay? Therefore, SPAQ spark <laughs> is, I'm sorry, a parallelogram. Why? Because it's one pair of opposite sides parallel and equal and grade tens this is why you need to know your actual rules about what makes a parallelogram and what doesn't is the fact that if you know that one pair of opposite sides are parallel and equal make this to be a parallelogram then you're sorted okay right done now it says prove that ar is four times mb Okay, we'll first have to find these things. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Um, we want to prove that AR, 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 oh, the whole of it, AR is four times MB. Okay. Okay, we can do this. This is doable. Okay. Do you agree that M is the midpoint of um, SQ because of that SPQR is a parallelogram and the diagonals bisect each other. So therefore M is the midpoint of SQ. So we know that M is the midpoint of SQ. Okay. In fact, um, yeah, okay. So then if we look at, I'm going to use a highlighter so you can see what I'm talking about. If we look at this triangle here, we that triangle there. Okay. Do you agree that if I let oh, pen, 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 I need a pen. If I let this be x, m b b x. Do you agree that a q is going to be two x by the midpoint theorem? Because M is a midpoint and B is a midpoint because it was given, okay, that SB is equal to BA. Therefore, by the midpoint theorem, this is going to be half the length of the third side, okay? So, I could say, I'm running out of space, so I'm actually going to erase, not all ink, I'm just going to erase the writing at the top here on the right. Grade tens, again, I just want to say that if you are watching this live and you worry about the fact that I have now deleted this writing and you were still trying to take it in, please remember that you can actually go and watch a recording of this lesson. Um, you just get exactly the same way as you did for the live lesson. And then what you can do